Okay. Every side of every magnet has dual inverse vortices. This is demonstrable via pressure differentials underneath the ferro cell. I knew it existed before I discovered the invention uh, that uh, my buddy had invented on the ferro cell. Let's uh, <laughs> before we actually get to the demonstration, I actually have a galaxy vortex tattooed on my hand here. Now what I'm doing underneath this camera is I have a video camera that's filming a diagram on the wall here of two vortices and a graph. So let's actually stick the vortex on my hand. Let's show you using a large neodymium since this is a uh, cathode uh, ray tube it's actually shooting out uh, electrostatic dischargers. Let's see if we can change the vortex spin on these and show you that each side of every magnet has twin inverse vortices. But that's only relative to spatial polarity. In reality the vortices are going the same dimension but since we're talking about everything that has uh, that has uh, mass, everything that has um, any sort of Cartesian vectors whatsoever, even they are microscopic, uh, everything has polarity. But not in the absolute sense, only relative to the absolute or the non-Cartesian principle. Now let's take a look here at the vortex on my hand. Now you'll notice if I bring this side, this pole of the magnet, that the uh, tattoo on my hand, this is just for giggles, will spin counterclockwise. Now if I flip the magnet over, it'll spin, start to spin clockwise. So clockwise, you see that? Invert it. Counterclockwise. That was just for that was just for giggles. Now here we have a counterclockwise spiral and on the right we have a clockwise spiral. So let's see which pole of this magnet that I have right now since it's black and unmarked. I don't know. Okay. Let me get my hand over the camera. I've actually had my arm in front of the camera, the video camera image. Okay. So I'm getting inverse spin to the actual printed diagram on the wall. This is a counterclockwise spiral. When I actually place this pole, it wants to spin it clockwise. Now, if you'll take a look right at the dead center, if you could see it there, you will see counterclockwise scintillation. In other words, this little scintillating spot in the center has its little hairs, if you will. If you look really closely and pause it, Try this at home if you want, you'll see counterclockwise spirals. So the centrifugal edge of the magnet is causing the electrostatic discharge from this cathode ray tube from this 27 inch television set to spin clockwise. But the inverse so on the centripetal point is spinning counterclockwise. Okay, now if I spin it over, since the centrifugal is spinning this clockwise, if I flip this over, now notice the direction it's going now, clockwise on the centrifugal, right? If I spin this over, it should be going counterclockwise on the centrifugal. I just flip the magnet over. There we go, counterclockwise. Now look, I'll flip it back and forth. This large vortex, counterclockwise. Flip it over, clockwise. Do the inverse over here. Let's take a look at the graph, however, first. I just have a regular graph. It's on the wall. Let me clear up the TV set. This is actually how you clear the TV set. It's kind of like wiping it with Windex, except I'm wiping, wiping it with magnetism. There we go. Simplex graph. Let me center it a little better here. Okay. Here you can see a little easier. You notice the cross at the center of the graph is starting to spin clockwise. You see that? Look closely. Look closely. Clockwise. Actually, you end up with a Hockenkoit if you do that. You put it too much before the image disappears. So, clockwise. Counterclockwise. Look. Counterclockwise. But at the dead center, since I know I'm turning the centrifugal, it's turning the uh, electrostatic uh, longitudinal discharges counterclockwise, the center will be clockwise. Hold on a second, I have to reset my video camera. It times out after a given period of time. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the outside is going counterclockwise, but the inside, inverse. Excuse me, the outside is going counterclockwise, the inverse is going clockwise, excuse me. See the hairs of the center, if you look really closely, you'll see the scintillating hairs of the center pointed in the inverse direction. 
Okay, we took a look at the counterclockwise spiral. Now let's take a look at the clockwise spiral. Counterclockwise, clockwise. Let's take a look at this one now. See here? Moving counterclockwise. If I flip it over, it's going to move clockwise. You see that? That's correct. Now the centrifugal is moving clockwise. So that means the inverse must be have its scintillating hairs. Now look at the very dead center. Look at the hairs, for lack of a better term. Well, I actually have a better term, but I just confuse people when I talk about it. If you take a look at the centripetal point, you'll actually see the hairs on that center bright spot emanating out inversely to the centrifugal. Every side of every magnet has one vortex, centrifugal vortex, a spigot, if you will, a faucet, and then right in the center we have a drain moving inverse. Whatever which side it is, is moving inverse. This centrifugal is moving inverse to this centrifugal. This centripetal is moving inverse to this centripetal. But they're all moving exactly the same relative to themselves. People have to think about that. If you actually demonstrate it with diagrams, you're able to see it. Or you can actually do it with your hands, but anyway. There we go. Simplicity is divinity. All you have to use is an electrostatic discharge device, i.e. a cathode ray tube from an old type, TV, old type tube TV set like this to demonstrate this. You see? You see the cross and the grid moving counterclockwise? Why, yes you do. Counterclockwise. Flip it over. Clockwise. Everything's moving clockwise. In the center, always inverse to the centrifugal. Centrifugals, always inverse to the centrifugal and inverse to the other side. This is irrefutable. It's undeniable. You will not read in any book on physics or field theory that magnetism exists as a vortex, a self... Well, I'm going to make this really simple analogously. A self-emitting drain with a... A self-emitting spigot with a uh, inverse drain on either side. Now... A magnet does not have poles. This is the conjugate nature of the universe. Polarity is a misnomer. What it is is the, uh, this is actually an equation tattooed in my hand there, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, which is an expression, the loss of inertia. Magnetism is the reciprocating precessional hyperboloid. But it interlaces itself, it mediates its own centrifugal and centripetal, centrifugal, centripetal, it mediates its own centrifugal and centripetal pressure differentials by interlacing vortices. Yes, vortices. That would be plural of vortex. Interlacing vortices. Centrifugal counterclockwise, centripetal clockwise. Centrifugal clockwise, centripetal counterclockwise. Mother Nature is not a cross-eyed crack whore with a calculator. The universe does not work off of math. Math is a human invention. Math is bean counting. Math is extremely useful in everyday life and every facet of life. We all know this, okay? But Mother Nature does not work off of math. It works off of pressures. There's no single straight line in the universe. Everything is curved linear. Not one single straight line in the universe exists. Everything is curved linear. Everything is pressure differential. 100% of the visible universe is propped up by the air in the balloon, if you will. 100% of the air in the balloon of the visible universe is magnetism and magnetism only. 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 There is no motion that is occurring here. The only motion is relative pressure perspective due to the reciprocating processional hyperboloid of centrifugal and centripetal magnetism mediating out as Faraday called magnetism the dielectric field. And more simple, and that kind of confuses a lot of people that are not familiar with field theory. What does the dielectric field mean? Well, dielectricity is the horse and magnetism is the horse crap. That's what magnetism is. Dielectricity is the horsey poo and magnetism is the horse crap or the horse farts. <laughs> Does that make it simple enough for you to understand? I hope so. That is what Faraday meant. 
in a really, really simple layman's terms, that magnetism is the dielectric field. That is both what is meant and implied. Yes, the loss of inertia. What is inertia? What is dielectricity? Inertia is the ether. Dielectricity is the ether. There's only one field and four field modalities. They're all one and the same thing. Humans, in their great stupidity, think they're four different things. We think there's dielectricity, magnetism, electricity, and gravity. No such bullshit exists. Only one thing exists. Water. We have other water modalities. Ice. Steam. <laughs> so, foolishly, we think that ice, steam, uh, water, you know, that these are separate things. No, they're one and the same thing. They're just different modalities of one entity. Magnetism, electricity, dielectricity. Gravity does not exist. Gravity is a uh, is nothing other than dielectric acceleration, or that which we call magnetic attraction. And on this, I will stake my life. There is nothing in this universe I'm more certain of the, the notion that an autonomous field modality that we call gravity exists. It does not exist. It is nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. Yes, of course, gravity exists. You jump off a building, you're going to fall and die. That's not what I'm talking about. I, I talk, my point is, is that an autonomous field modality, which we think is something totally separate, a separate facet of the universe, does not exist. It is not a separate facet of the universe. And by the way, gravity works off of the right-hand rule. Just as does magnetism, just as does electricity. Electricity, by the way, is a hybrid of dielectricity and, uh, and magnetism. This is a quantifiable empirical fact. It's undeniable. It's discovered by Maxwell, Faraday, Steinmetz, and the rest. Five times psi equals Q and a plank of electrification. Electro electricity is not an autonomous field modality either. So, here we have it. This is as simple as it gets. By the way, you can see I've got a magnet tattooed on my hand. Yeah, I'm actually filming. There's a video camera underneath uh, what I'm filming right now with another camera that's actually filming this diagram which is just taped to the wall. I mean this is as simple as, it's get, as it gets. I'm actually showing a, a loop, not a loop, but a, uh, a video recording projection of the uh, diagrams that I have uh, taped on the wall. Counterclockwise? Clockwise. Counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise? Clockwise? Counterclockwise? Counterclockwise? Yes. Is that simple? Mother Nature doesn't have a calculator. Oh my god, how simple! Math is an invention of humans. Math is bean counting. That's all math is. Math is not to be confused with what the Greeks understood and studied, which was arithmos. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, we don't have differentiation in English for arithmos and mathematica. But the ancient Greeks sure as hell did. But we're a de evolved species of knuckle-dragging morons. Human beings have de-evolved. Yes, de-evolution. We have uh, better technology, but we're comprehensionally uh, knuckle-dragging monkeys. Yes, humans have de-evolved intellectually. Well, that can't be true. We got all these sorts of gadgets and crap and TVs and space shuttles. No, that means you're technologically advanced. That means no. And that doesn't mean you're wise or you're you advanced, so no. Big difference there. People don't understand that either. But that's a point for another discussion. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you could drop a buck or two, or you could send me a big fat juicy pizza covered in cheese because I love pizza. I'm not trying to get rich in this world. All I'm trying to do is survive and stay alive long enough to finish up my book and some other books. I don't care about that shit. I'm not looking to have a BMW and a big fancy house on the hill. All I have, as long as I have a roof over my head and you know some, uh, you know, a can of soup on the table. Quite frankly, I'm uh, happy enough for that. So, thanks for watching. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye.